Hi everybody, Michelangelo Badio here for another installment of No Boundaries. Now, this lesson today is something that you can never talk enough about. It's how to use scales and modes for soloing. And I'm going to show you some shortcuts because, you know, as much as you talk about it, it's kind of like alternate picking. You can talk and talk and talk and talk and people say, I don't understand it. I don't understand. And so it's worth repeating. You know, I remember taking French in high school and they used to say, écoutez et répétez, listen and repeat. And that phrase has stuck with me my whole life because you have to repeat things over and over and over. And when you know them, you repeat it over and over again. You constantly reinforce the things that you know. And, and it's interesting because you want to learn new things. But if you keep up with the things you already know and keep your skill level high, you find yourself like me, uh, where I'm older now, but my skills have not diminished. And not everybody can say that, but it's not something that like I was born with this magical ability. Yeah, I was born with talent, and, but I was born with a work ethic that enabled me even to today to still love to practice. Now, uh, let's see, you're my hero. Okay, I'm reading some of these things. I wanna say, give some shout outs to people that always come on. I wanna say hi to Tanya. I wanna say hi to Alexis. Hello, how are you? I want to say hi to Denny, whose guitar collection is pretty amazing. I'd love to just see it because it's radically different from my own. Uh, I'd like to say hi to Brett. Brett's a very uh, big inspiration for me. Uh, I'd like to say hi to Nick because he's great and he plays really good double guitar. And then Roxana. And I'd like to say hello to Jenny uh, from Germany. And there's so many other people. Uh, Parnell, hey, how are you, man? And I see Parnell online. I've known Parnell for a long time. Ooh, there's a guy named Darth. Just the name Darth. What can you say? We all know Darth. So anyway, and uh, this is uh, Cinco de Mayo. Well, yesterday it was May the 4th. Be with you. So uh, I, I had Darth on my mind. Now, uh, what I want to play... Hey, Matthew, how are you? Uh, I'm looking at other people. Chris, there's a lot of people online. So anyway... Um, now, the guitar that I'm playing is something that I don't normally play. Uh, it's not one of my signature models, but Sawtooth, uh, you know, we have gone from this company that, you know, three years ago, you know, Sawtooth's not that old of a company as far as guitars, but the people that work with it, with the, the big three companies, uh, Sawtooth, Chromacast, and GoDPS Music, have really just created this juggernaut. I mean... You know, it's very rare that a company can do anything outside one specific thing. For example, my former company, um, they made electrics, but they were actually sold more acoustics than electrics, and the acoustics weren't that amazing. You know, they were just in a right price point. And with Sawtooth, we have great electrics, we have great acoustics, we have great basses, acoustic and electric basses. Uh, we have great drums. And then when you get into the... Uh, the, you know, the percussion instruments. I mean, my God, you should hear the cajones that Sawtooth can make and all these different percussion uh, instruments that they do that, that, you know, the whole line is selling really well. And it's very, it's not easy to do that. Uh, but the quality of the instruments is really great for the price point, especially. Now, what I'm playing here it's really not that expensive of, of a guitar. It's the ES series. And I'm going to go over it a little bit. And then we're going to go over some of the solo concepts that can really help you. Because being a guitar player, I like to reduce things to its simplest form. I, You know, I'm, I have two schools of thought in my life. One, PMA, positive mental attitude. Joey, yes, yes, I, I, me, me. It's all about me, Joey. Positive, positive, positive. It's like a coin. If you flip that coin over, it's positive, M-A, P-M-A, positive mental attitude, or negative mental attitude. There's no gray here. See, you know, in our world today, you know, you know, fusion is everything. You know, you know, a long time ago, people could see one side or see the other, and now... 
yeah, it's polarized, but it's also the lines are blurred, like the song, Blurred Lines. And so, you know, things that we used to see as norms are not quite norms anymore. Uh, I don't see things that way. And this is not political or religious. I, I'm talking about my attitude. I only see it two ways. You're either positive or you're negative. You can't be, well, I feel kind of positive today. No, you either are or you are not. You know, you either do or you do not. And so it makes it very simple for me, you know, when I'm playing guitar, did I get the riff? Yes or no? Uh, did I practice hard enough today? Yes or no? Uh, did I? So everything in my brain has to be simplified to a yes or a no or a positive or a negative. And I find out it cuts a lot of the clutter out. Now I'm going to go over this guitar just a little bit. This is not an expensive guitar. It's light. Um, it's got the cool Yngwie color to it. I like. But it's a really good sound. Now I've got the MAB string dampener on here, which is really cool. Let's move it up. Let's go over. Five position toggles. This is the middle pickup, look. I love these sounds. I love these single call songs. position. Somebody wrote the ventures. favorites. So anyway, you have a really good sounding guitar here, and it's not very expensive! But here's one of my favorites, and I'm gonna uh, play. There was a song back in the day. I just want to make sure we're all tuned up here because I beat the heck out of this guitar, and I actually, it's in my collection, but I haven't played it that much. I play my signatures. It's a song called, yeah, somebody said it looks like an Ingve Malmsteen's guitar. Uh, th this is correct. It's that really kind of cream finish and, uh, you know, just standard Strat style. But um, I love this song called Wayfair and Stranger.
So it's pretty cool. And then you have the bridge position. <laughs> Joey's in the zone. Now, uh, let me tell you something here. Uh, three wolves every day. Okay, now, um, I don't know what happened here. Huh. I think we had a, we had a cutout here. Um, anyway, um, what I wanted to talk, yeah, I love UFO. Uh, hold on, we, oh, sorry, the cable. Here's what happened though. The cable got unhooked from my pedal board because Joey is being a narcissist. Let me let you out a little secret. Joey is a narcissist. I, I, me, me. Who do you want to see? Joey, Joey. But see, Joey's not a sociopath because he cares about people. Him. So he, he cares about a hand. So, and he's always there to lend a hand. Uh, sorry about that. I was playing so hard that we, uh, that uh, the cable came undone here from my pedal board. Now, how do you relate this to solos? Um, I mean, I've been going a little crazier, but when I... Somebody said rude? Joey's rude, you're right, he's darn rude. So, what I do, one of the best ways to think about soloing with scales. Now, again, in this 21st century, things are kind of convoluted. They're, they're meshed, okay? So, whereas in, in one era we had here and here, in the 21st century, they're kind of like this. It's like Joey and Robert. They never really intertwine, but they kind of intertwine. And so what, we, what I learned in classical harmony, this is not jazz harmony, this is orchestral harmony, is that a scale has a tonal center. And if you get anything out of this lesson tonight, tonal center, because this is what directs your ear to listen and understand scales. For example, if I went like this, if I went, do you see how that it wants to resolve? A tonal center is a five to one resolution. Let me make sure I'm in tune here. So I beat the heck out of this. Joey went insane. But I like when Joey goes insane. I just sit back and enjoy the show. Okay, so. There we go. Okay, when you hear. Do you hear how? See, a tonal center means that, 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 that things want. It's like the sun in our universe. That, that everything wants to revolve around the sun. And so when you think of. When, when you think of scales, a scale has a tonal center. So when you hear, 
so you hear this, you hear, it wants to resolve, it wants to go home, it wants to go to the next chord. That is a tonal center. See, modally, modes do not have that. But see, in our day and age, again, the theoretical part of it has been kind of diluted uh, because, for example, uh, the harmonic minor, still the harmonic minor, but the melodic minor of Bach's era is now called the jazz minor. And, and there are just so many different ways. There are synthetic modes. I've talked about this before where make up your mode. It's like making a pie. You put anything in the pie and it's your pie. I like, I, at one time, I created the... COVID mode! It's my synthetic mode of death, doom, destruction, mayhem, and social distancing. It's my mode! I own this mode! It's the MAP death, COVID mode! I'm not kidding. I can make, that's a synthetic mode. And so, what I didn't learn that. <laughs> I didn't learn this in school. I actually learned like real theory. And so when I think about this to understand, and if again, I'm goofing around and I'm having fun because I love life and I love guitar. I play guitar for a living my entire life. It's not a bad thing to do. So I wake up every morning going, I have two companions, Joey, Joey, and Robert, who's just pissed. He just wants to shred. And, and I think to myself, I'm the, one of the luckiest people on planet Earth. You know, I, I, I have, you know, nobody gave it to me. Nobody said, oh, Michael, you're so wonderful that we're going to just give you stuff. No, it didn't happen like that. I worked hard for it. You know, I mean, I, I worked and, and I still work for it. I work every day. You know, I, my, my goal in my life, as far as guitar, there's a lot of goals that I have, is to never, ever let my technique be diminished because I'm getting older. Just something simple like this. If the people out there, can you make a fist? See, one of the things that I've learned, and, and I'm going to apply this back to the scales and modes, is that when people get older, they lose power. They lose power in their hands. Now watch this. Now I'm doing this, I'm over, I'm, you know, making it overly dramatic for a reason. I can make a fist and it's hard and it's mean like this if you can't do that then you have to work at being able to do that because when people get older they lose that power in their hands it makes them play lighter now what does lighter do doesn't give you the attack doesn't give you the tone the tone and it doesn't give you the intonation and the feel but when you have this power in your hands like you had when you were young, it's unstoppable. Um, I mean, there are a lot of people that still have this, and, and I'm one of them. And, and I make really sure that I continue with this. Now, one of the things, Speed Kills, all my instructional programs, they're going to be, I'm telling you, they're, the methodology is going to be there 50 years in the future because it was based on orchestral music was based on how did the masters learn? How did, how did people learn before us? I'm a student of history and I genuinely want to help. Now, getting back to the scales and modes, a scale has a tonal center. So if you hear this, That's the harmonic minor scale. There are three basic chords in each scale that you have to understand to hear a tonal center. When I say tonal center, think about something, it's like a homing beacon. You want to go back home. You, the, there's a chord that drives you. And so when you, when you understand that is a tonal center, see, modes aren't like this. If I go like this. Now, we hear this as a tonal center. We hear our ear because we're used 
used to hearing rock music. That's a song, Honey Child, by Bad Company. Honey Child. Now, we hear it ending like this, but it's not technically... If I went like this, if I went... We might want to go, but it's only because of our rock ears. It's not like a Bach would hear this go... He would hear... So... The, the tonal center is the ability of one chord to lead you back to the root, to the tonic, to the, to the first word of a story. So when you hear, and now why am I saying that? When you practice solos, take a mode, take a scale. Let's take the major scale. this I can end perfectly on that because that is the tonal center of it. it's the one the four and the five those are the three most important chords in a scale in in anything that you're going to listen to and play to. So if you're going to do something like this one. goofing around and I'm adding a lot of chromatics. One of the things I do in my style, I do a lot of four notes for string. Like Somebody wrote, when did mankind first make music? You know what? I think I got an answer to that. Some, um, and that's uh, John that wrote that. Somebody wrote, when did mankind first make music? One, when someone could sing. La, 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 la. I gathered acorns and brought them to the cave. I grabbed my woman by the hair and dragged her in the cave. Okay, so you wrote songs about, my woman is my woman. I'm going to beat her on the head with my club and drag her into the cave. But that's, that's sexualizing women. I don't care. I'm a caveman. I don't know none of this stuff. And so when you, when you had people singing and writing songs, you know, singing songs about what they did, that's, and then secondly, when somebody figured out you could beat on something and make a rhythm. That's simple. So when somebody came up with a rhythm, somebody wrote when they stubbed their toe on a rock like, ow, 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 I stubbed my toe, it hurt like hell, I stubbed my toe, now it's well. So, I mean, that's when it all started. It's just, you know, what are the elements of music? There's three only. There's only three. Melody, harmony, rhythm. That's it. There are three distinct sections of music. That's it. Three. 
eat if you're going if you know and and we used to make jokes back in the day well hip hop is like missing like two out of three you know it's like cool in my crib cold video devin fbi warren though that don't mean nothing you know it's like so you don't need all you need is a beat rhythm is an essential part of of music and so if you have rhythm if you have melody if you have harmony you have encompassed the big three. See, music isn't that complicated. The problem is people make it complicated, and sometimes teachers teach more of what they think you should know than just the information that's out there. I, I've been a, ver a purist my whole life about this. I believe my function as a teacher is not to impart anything of my biases to you. I might like another artist or another band more than you. I'm sure I do. And I'm sure you like other artists that I don't particularly care for. That's just life in general. That's not my job to be a judge of, no, you shouldn't like this person. You should like this. My job is to show you this is the technique. This is the technique. This is the technique. And you use it however you want to make the music you want to make. And so when you're playing, and you know, I'm gonna bring this back to the solos. The best thing that you can do is set up a solo section, even if it's like this. Now that's the Dorian mode. Now there really isn't a tonal center if I go. It's actually called a plagal cadence, believe it or not, where they would like, amen. you know, that would be the amen part, you know, after they sing a religious service. I, and so, oh, Clapton. I love that. So, but when you're playing, just say, say something like this. Santana, I love it, evil ways. You get to change your evil ways, Joey. Cause you're a hand that's getting overboard. Hey, hey, I am Joey. Joey, not Joey, Joey. E is for E. E is for eternal. E is for emotion. E is for empathy. Because I empathize with all the people that ain't Joey. And so, anyway, what I can say is this. You set up a rhythm pattern. And then what you do, uh, please give a metal sound to the immigrant song. I don't have to give a metal sound to the immigrant song. The immigrant song is metal! But I like... What you do is you target chord tones. I have a really... Uh, a riff that I use a lot. I go like this. Watch. I start with an E minor 7th arpeggio. Try it. And then, then I play in the scale. Then I use Dorian. So now I outline A. So I've outlined E minor 7th and then A7. Then I outline B minor. Then I can outline E major, E minor. Now I read something interesting about Yngwie Malmsteen. He was saying in an interview that, you know, people think he's really fast, but he doesn't think he's really fast. He just plays things that sound so good fast that they sound good slowed down. And I, I actually agree with that. Um, you know, it's like when you hear something this fast. How do you know if it sounds good at all? But when you slow it down... I can also go. And so when you solo, 
what you want to do is you want to target notes that are in the chord that, that is being played at the, at the time. So... So just by outlining chord tone, I can outline, you can hear where the chords go. Again, I'm gonna, out, I'm gonna say this, tonal center. You have to understand where the tonal center is to start working on a solo. Because, and, and this means where does everything resolve to? Where does it come back to? Where is home? for this key. Like where, in other words, if you were going, you know, it's the front door. It's the beginning, like what, when you want, you know, all the things around you always come back to one thing. The tonal center is where it's, where your key exists. And so to, Uh, somebody wrote Slash is pretty great at that. I'd have to admit he is. You know, I mean, you know, and again, I've said this a while ago, but people that that have music in them will find a way to make music. And and this is the reason why so many critics are wrong when they when they don't really understand methodology of teaching. You it doesn't matter that I teach purely technique. See, you know, a lot of critics will say, well, that doesn't sound like a song, bro. Like, I want to hear like a song, dude. I'm not trying to teach you songs. I'm trying to teach you technique so that you can learn whatever song you want and apply what you want in your own head. Musical people will find a way to make music. It's that simple. My job as a teacher is not to try to prejudice what you think or what you feel or what you like. My job, this is only my opinion, it's not anybody else's opinion. My job is to teach you the different techniques and let you decide for yourself what you want to use and how you want to use it. And so that's what I do. You know, that's what my teachers did. And, and you know, so these methodologies that I came up with I'm not just mine alone. There, there are a lot of thought behind this. I wanted to help you because it helps me. It just goes like, and one of the things that I do, somebody said, how they don't know how sure to find how to define a tonal center. I'm gonna say it one last time. That's why it's so confusing. If you hear E seventh, it's screaming to go here. That is a tonal center. You have this. Now here's a, I'm going to throw a wrench in the spokes here. There's something called a deceptive cadence where you can deceive somebody. Watch this one. So this, the minor counterpart of a major, for example, a major scale on the sixth degree is a minor chord. So you have a major, like... So what they call this is a deceptive cadence. A cadence means a four to one, five to one. In other words, you are going back to your tonal center. But if I go like this. It's done all the time. It gives you that kind of orgasm of like. Oh baby, I think you're And so what, uh, so somebody, rhythmic cadence. Sorry, dude. The rhythmic cadence, not uh, 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 that's that's something that you've heard. But what is a rhythmic cadence? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Uh, somebody asked me about uh, explain a rhythmic cadence. There is no rhythmic cadence. Uh, you know, there's things called ostinatos, which like 
It's a reoccurring pa pattern in our life. That's an ostinato. An ostinato is a reoccurring pattern. It could be like, you know. But there's no rhythmic, uh, there's nothing like that. That doesn't make sense. Parallel keys, um, that's, mm, it's not really a way to describe it. Uh, you, you know, again, you know, these are music theory, theory terms. What I'm saying is the tonal center is in within one key. So uh, that the main thing that you can grasp out of this is when you're playing, just even this. Now that's the Phrygian mode. So you can hear. So you can you can hear in your head where those notes are going in relation to the chords. That's what I'm talking about. So when you're soloing, the first question you ask, what key are you in? The second question you ask. Is it a scale or is it a mode? And then you find, and then you think to yourself, okay, what what are those? What scale am I in? What mode am I in? And then where is the tonal center? See, modes are more ambiguous because the tonal center is here, but it just we're used to it because we hear it. Um, but it's not like going. And so it's one of the things that uh, us being brought up on rock music and just modern music, we can hear a tonal center. It's like, where does everything seem to, to come back to? And so that is the most important thing. And then when you're listening to a solo progression, try to play notes that work with the chords. And, and one of the things I was reading about a jazz guitarist today, he plays eighth notes on different solo progressions until he screws up because you want to, you, you know, it's like, you know, I've used this Charlie Christian riff a lot. Like. So listen, you can hear the chords moving just by the melody. Listen. I was thinking, oh, wow, this is going great. One of the things that I wanted to uh, tell you, too, is this is a 22 fret guitar. So it's kind of cool to have that, you know, because a lot of the normal strats have 21 frets, so you're stuck at C sharp. So that has that 22nd fret. That's just really cool. Now here's a riff that I told you about.
And so, uh, so someone, uh, I'm trying to read some of these uh, comments here. But anyway, the idea of a tonal center is where you have to start. You have to understand what key are you in. Are you in a scale? Are you in a mode? And if so, one or the other, or even both. It could be, you know, that you could do two things at the same time. Santana did it in evil ways. Watch, Dorian mode. <laughs> That's, that's scale. That's harmonic minor. That's not the way a mode works. The mode would have been like this. <laughs> Sounds weird, doesn't it? Because it doesn't resolve. The resolution is your tonal center. When you write a song, what do you start with? Rhythm, melody, or a title for a song? Sorry, I just happened to see this come in. I'm going to digress to this. I'm going to change uh, gears real quick. All of the above. Um, sometimes I have a, a beat. Like, for example, when I came up with the song, the music for Freight Train. I had a... Uh, an idea of the beat. And I told you uh, in, an, in another live stream, I had this song called Believe in Yourself. And Jim, Jim Gillette goes, this guy's stupid, man. And, and about two minutes later, he's going, he just wrote that like out of thin air. And all of a sudden he goes, I can't sing as high as Jim, nobody can. But I'm like, I'm like a freight train. I'm like a freight train coming. I just came up with it. And, you know, I found, uh, you know, a lot of songwriters that come up with the best songs. It just happens very organically and fast. Um, we had a song called Crazy Love. And uh, what Jim did is he hummed the melody. He was like, like tell me a little story about a man and a girl breaking up. And so he recorded it on an answering machine, sent it to me when I was in Chicago. We were, it was over Christmas. I was visiting my parents, and he was out of town, uh, you know, doing what, what he did over the holidays. And then um, he sent it to me. And so I heard this melody, like, down, 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 down. It's it like, like... <laughs> And so, and he even went like, love turn into hate, turn into love. And that chromatic note. So I, I heard, love turn into hate, turn into love. Love turn into fire, and he went like, crazy, crazy, crazy love. And so he had all this, he just sang it. And I went, And then, I, then I had. He had like this whole song, this melody, and what I did is I just wrote an underlying chord progression underneath, underneath it. So, um, you know, I have written a lot of songs, hundreds of published songs. And I mean, when you hear or even something like science fiction. The 
song Oceans of Time on my uh, last, on my album Intermezzo. Now, it's a seven string, but just... <laughs> What I, what I do is when I write music, I just write whatever. There's no set rule. And having no rules is what gives you the ability to not be stuck in a genre or stuck in writer's block. I mean, I remember when 9-11 happened a long, long time ago. You know, it was, uh, uh, I came up with... Called our arms. I had that song for a long time, even in the old Holland days, and I introduced it to the band, but it was too heavy for them. And, and uh, that is the, you know, but I mean, I just write a lot of music. I mean, how about this? <laughs> It just and but sacrifice for love and then Holland, God, what a singer, you know. Sacrifice for love. You know, he sounded like Paul Rogers meets Rod Stewart, just such a soulful voice. And then uh but you know, one of the things that that you know I done over the years is I, I really don't have writer's block. I don't. Uh you know, I've got so many projects on the table right now. Uh it's unbelievable. I'm I'm grateful. I, I never take it for granted. Um Basically, right now, this sounds insane. I don't have to do another show live for years. Uh, and I've, I've based a lot of my career, I've played thousands and thousands of shows live. But now a lot of it's internet-based. It's a lot of music-based. But one of the things that I do is that I never forget the roots, that, you know, the tonal centers, the, the what you have to do to achieve and, and maintain what you already have because see there's two parts to being a great guitar player or a great musician or a great person in life one you maintain what you have and two you strive to be better than what you've been before and so anyway i just want to say this too metal method has a, a really great sale on my products uh this week it's a 25 percent off sale this es really rules uh we have also recorded over a dozen new videos for Sawtooth, acoustic with cajones, all sorts of stuff, the MAB band. So there's a lot to look forward to. But I'd just like to say this on behalf of Sawtooth, Chromacast, and Go DPS Music, I'm Michelangelo Badio. See.